and now fiscal policy. I don't know if we have sounds from that, but he's not likely to speak right now. Uh, if he does, we'll hear him. Yes. So the customer thing is to wait. Yes. Until we have finished the attack, then we can say what is that. Yes. Mm -hmm. What would you want to tell Kenyans just before you read the budget? Anyway, so they, they are not surprised. Yes. They just uh, laugh at the Yes. To actually sustain the country. Maybe I think Kenyans are asking about the loan. Yes. Okay. What? Not ask questions about the budget when you are going to leave. <laughs> <it. laughs> even, All right. even your training is assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. No, 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 no. So Professor Chukuna making his way downstairs where he'll meet another team. Uh, let's, let's continue the discussion. He's right on time. This is the first time I'm seeing them actually keeping time. It's, it's almost like a, a military precision, uh, you know. He has insisted, uh, Wambua, mm. that uh, this budget is the only way Kenya gets out of where we are currently. Do you believe, having read through it, gone through it, that this one of the ways if not the only way for them that will get us, so to speak, out of the woods? Out of... I don't think so. Because in this, in this budget, what we see is uh, an increase in the, the budget itself. We're basically seeing a whole new one trillion shillings being looked for uh, through, tax, through taxation. So I don't think they're getting us out. They're getting us deeper into the woods, in my view. And maybe this is something we can discuss... Uh, so the kind of optimism that has been expressed right from the executive right to the members of parliament affiliated to kenya kwanzaa speaking to people because i know your organization is one of those organizations that are big in the citizens voice did you hear the citizens voice in this or this is purely from the standpoint of the institution where you work i think i think where if there was uh, any any iota of capturing of citizen voices in this process uh, there would have been a responsive budgeting there would have been responsive uh, uh, configuration of the finance bill but that's not that has not happened i do not know i have not heard any single person who is not saying life is increasingly difficult who is not saying it is difficult to afford even the things that we used to afford i have not heard anybody who has said that for years. Okay. So things are going down. And everybody is saying, you know, uh, the All right. and services. All right. Um, he's uh, finally at uh, the ground floor just outside the main entrance of the treasury buildings. This is uh, customary. What usually happens is uh, they will take a couple of pictures beginning with a group picture. Then drastically it will be reduced and finally it will be Professor Njuguna Ndungu only with the briefcase at the end of the day is the center of attention but one of the things that we are not likely to see this time is probably the the anxiety uh, that kenyans usually have whenever this budget uh, statement is read at the national assembly a joint sitting of the national assembly uh, because it's been debated um, it's on second reading that will pass yesterday 176 to 81 going to kenya kwanzaa and um, uh, th there are no surprises in this. Basically, he's opening uh, the debate for this, right, Wambua? He's just going to Parliament to table it to open debate, right? I'm going to the opposition to open debate. More often than not, there will be mm. very little, if any changes. At all. Okay. I'm, to I'm told uh, you, there's a, a little problem with your mic as uh, we wait for that to be sorted. Uh, the Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Professor Nzuguna Ndungu, is ready for action. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. And he's not new to this, was in charge of the monetary policy for such a long time. In fact, 2013, um, the outset of uh, President uh, Uru Kenyatta's government, he was the one at, uh, at uh, um, the Central Bank of Kenya dealing with the monetary policy. And now he's the guy with the um, uh, fiscal policy right at uh, Treasury. Uh, he's never done this before, um, but he begins uh, President William Ruto's reign by reading the first budget that has been termed as very ambitious because it's uh, 
3.6 unprecedented, but it's the amount of money in there that needs to go to uh, paying our loans. Almost half of our GDP goes to the payment of uh, our loans. There's several proponents and opponents of our um, economy and uh, how they think it's going to turn out to be. Uh, noting that uh, we have a huge amount of money from uh, the total finance bill that goes just to paying um, our debts, almost 1.7 trillion shillings. There's also the other problem of our collection in terms of revenue, how much we are collecting versus how much we are spending. In the last financial year, I think it was just over 2 trillion. And right now, it's under 2 trillion, and yet the budget is about 3.6 trillion, a deficit of uh, 720 billion shillings but the question is looking at that versus the amount of money that has been placed for development what happens do they forgo this and stop borrowing the president said he'll not be borrowing so if we for this financial year the government decides that uh, we're not financing any development projects let's deal with our recurrent the high cost of living and all those inflation all those th factors that come within it let's deal with it and forget development for now then it, it means that we don't have to borrow further because actually we can uh, have that money because 1.4 uh, trillion shillings, uh, actually 2.1 uh, trillion shillings goes to finance government operations, about uh, another 40 goes to, uh, that's national government, then goes to parliament, and judiciary takes about 22. Those are the arms of the government in summary and how they have the allocation. So two point, uh, about 2.23 billion shillings goes to the judiciary, about 40 goes to the other arm, which is parliament, and about 2.1 trillion goes to the national government. There's a deficit of about 720 billion shillings. So that's how we stand as a country today, looking at the budget. I don't know if uh, Wombo's mic is now okay, that uh, you can comment about. They didn't even need to use a vehicle. I mean, there's a time President Uhuru Kenyatta has the treasure. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. to parliament. I mean, yeah, all days. Mm. This is... This is a... <laughs> I sound check. Okay, okay. So, 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 uh, I, I. Okay, okay. So now now straight. Now 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 straight. I'm gonna introduce. Emmanuel Tor is on the other side. Emmanuel Tor, we see the pictures from here, but you see them live. What can you tell us? Well, uh, Ken, uh, we are still uh, setting up here. It is a beehive of activities. Uh, this is where the CS will come in before he now, uh, he's now ushered inside uh, the parliament buildings where he will uh, read that uh, budget. And the house leadership is here from uh, the top. Uh, that is the majority leader, Kimani Shungwa, and the chief whip, uh, Osoro, Sevans Osoro. They're just tying up everything to ensure that uh, the budget is going to be as tight as uh, how they are dressed and sharply so. And let me just start with the, 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 the budget uh, committee chairperson, uh, Didi Nyoro, just tell us something and then we'll go to the uh, majority leader. How uh, are you prepared for this? We are prepared and we have been prepared for all that long. One, because the budget that we are reading is a budget for really the Kenyan people. We are reading a 3.679 trillion budget, out of which 2.3 trillion is remaining in the national government expenditure. But the specific areas are the ones that are interesting. 27.4% of our national government expenditure is going to the education of the Kenyan children. That is uh, 630 billion. And out of which we are adding more money to JSS. We are adding more money to, uh, that is capitation of JSS. We are adding more money to help. There are many other very good things. We have uh, put in 250 billion Kenya shillings for finishing up on going roads, which have stalled. Uh, by, by, by for a long time. We are uh, adding 141 billion Kenya shillings to our health care. This year will also be a smiling year for those who are graduating from universities because we are going and we have put in the budget money to hire 8,000 interns who will be paid 25,000 shillings per month as we prepare them for the job market. Thank you so much, Didi Nyoro, the chairperson of the uh, Budget Committee. And now, let me now speak to the uh, majority leader in the House. Uh, y it has taken a lot of time to come up with this budget. It is, it is the first one for Kenya Kwanzaa. Just a comment. Well, as you say, uh, rightly say, it's the first budget for the Kenya Kwanzaa government. 
uh, amidst a lot of difficulties uh, globally with the global economy and of course that, that has not left our country out of the challenges that are there globally. Um, but it's a good budget that uh, the Committee of Budget and Appropriations Committee worked on. As you are aware, all that the CS today is doing is to give his revenue raising measures statement. The budget was actually done by the Budget and Appropriations Committee and approved by the House uh, this week. You remember the budget, the budget report was approved. We have since uh, done even the third reading of the budget. And as the chairman has said, uh, a lot of gains, including gains in the health sector, um, uh, under universal health coverage, uh, also gains for our young people in universities. If you look at the budget for the Higher Education Loans Board, has almost tripled from what was there last year to ensure that uh, our young men and women who are universities, colleges and TVETs are able to get adequate capitation and to be able to go through school. As we prepare them for the job market, uh, uh, just as the chairman has said, including internships that are, uh, have a sizable stipend for them. Therefore, it's promising for young people, especially in this country okay. and uh, uh, many other Kenyans across the country. Okay. Before I let you go, uh, yesterday you, have an, you had an overwhelming win in the House, uh, about more than double of the members. What tricks did you use to have that num those numbers going forward? I don't think it's really about tricks. It's about people being able to think rationally and be able to make decisions based on what is uh, before them. And as I said in the House yesterday, the finance bill was largely vilified. And uh, uh, because we have no control of the media, we have no control of what goes out there. Uh, a number of our friends in the opposition have good control of media, media houses in this country. And uh, th therefore, the narratives that have been sold, and unfortunately aided by the media, uh, <laughs> it's true, to, uh, a lot of narratives, and I, I don't mean this station because I have not seen this on KTN, but there are media houses that have deliberately distorted information, deliberately sought to incite Kenyans against the finance bill. But I think members of parliament are able to read through and see whether what has been said. And you remember me giving examples of insurance compensation, people telling people, oh, now when you get into an accident, you have to pay VAT to government when you are compensated for your fractured leg. Things that are untrue, a lot of untruths, a lot of misinformation that was being peddled out there. And uh, I think members of parliament, since they are intelligent enough, were able to read through the bill and see many of those and truth were not in the bill. And therefore they voted based on what is actually in the bill because we're voting for the bill. Okay. Uh, and, and I look forward to the third reading next week. The chairman finance is here. He will tell you they, they, they have also made a few changes, a number of changes actually, not a few. Um, in view of uh, what they receive from the public in uh, from the public participation exercise and again which i have got to say the same media house i saw them last evening trying to incite kenyans oh the public participation was an exercise in futility so, therefore let's not uh, tall, let's not hide there are media houses in this country that are deliberate to misinform disinform and mislead kenyans and i think the kenyan people must be able to get to a position where now they can see their elected representatives whom the people trust more than those who are peddling lies okay. are able to make a decision that as, as i said in the house yesterday is in the best interest of the people thank you so much majority leader the national assembly uh, kimani shumwa he said that uh, we are accurate as KTN News. And uh, let me now go to Chief Whip, uh, Silvana Sosoro. The last time we talked, you said there were tricks that you're going to use to have the bill pass. And yesterday we saw them at play. Many absentees, uh, absentees not uh, being in the house. What are other tricks remaining? Uh, of course, today we are talking about the budget. We already dispensed of the issue to do with the finance bill yesterday uh, on the second reading. Of course, now we will now not disclose our other tricks that are, we are preparing to use for the next uh, stage, that is the third reading. But just to add on what uh, the majority leader said, uh, the budget and uh, appropriation and such, maybe um, just to add on the point of uh, the f conditional grant that has been granted, the 4.7 billion conditional grant that has been given to the 47 counties for industrial parks, something very vital, you know, we want to do industrial parks across the 47 counties plus an additional three billion you know for the epz the industrial park so there are a lot of positives uh, in this uh, uh, budget and uh, today we focus on the hearing 
of the budget by the minister and such. Of okay. course, I know you are right. there. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Silvana Sosoro, uh, the chief whip. Uh, we could have spoken to more, but uh, uh, the CS is already here. And uh, let me now uh, hand it over to the other end as we also see this uh, event unfold. Thank you, Emmanuel To, for speaking to the leadership of uh, the National Assembly. Uh, the convoy is uh, making its way to the presence of parliament. I bet in a few, they'll be inside only the CS riding in a car. The rest have been walking. But let me bring back um, Mr. Ambua to this. Um, the, Kenya, the optimism that has been expressed by parliament, do you see the same thing out there? Uh, no, it is, it is not there. The reason is that there's a disconnect between what parliamentarians are saying and what people are saying. There's a disconnect between what they are saying and the truth as it is. For mm -hmm. instance, somebody has just said that they, a lot of money is going to education. Kimani Shungwa. Yes. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, right now, uh, if, you look, if you look at the, the budget, and you bear me witness with this, both basic education and higher education are getting slashes. Mm -hmm. the, the money is reducing. Basic education by 17%. And higher education by 8%. Okay. So what money is going to... In terms of allocation? In terms of allocation. Mm -hmm. So it's going lower. If you look at, uh, if you look at agriculture, you know, the, the cost of, of, uh, of produce, of, of producing food, mm. is going higher because there are uh, cost of fertilizer and stuff like that. The cost of production mm -hmm. in agriculture will go it's actually going higher. Up. And the, the money that has been allocated to agriculture as was supposed to benefit last state benefited 665,000 mm -hmm. farmers in this budget it's only budgeted for 225,000 farmers so it's going down. that is the truth it's yeah. going down yeah so i don't you, you know sometimes you listen to parliamentarians you listen to the to the uh, president and you're wondering are we in the same country but, but they speak about the overall picture before i go to um Noaki Kemboi downstairs they say the overall picture is a picture of uh better budget and reduced budget in terms of uh, money that we are seeking from the taxpayers overally that's what the president says uh, your analysis of the budget is that depicted expressly that the budget is actually cutting down on the amount of money that the government is asking from the taxpayers no that is the, the reverse is true the opposite is true that let's just look at fuel right now uh, kenyans pay eight uh, eight percent in terms of fuel uh, taxes this budget is proposing 14%. How can 16. that be lower? 16. Mm -hmm. How can that be lower? Overally. We, overally. Overally, yes. No, but, you know, if you look at a basic component uh, uh, item like fuel, the moment it is increased, everything else increases. Mm -hmm. VAT on goods and, uh, and so everything increases. Okay. So you cannot say it is, it, it is lower. No, it doesn't make sense. What, what is happening here, we are having a budget which has got more money, but which does not translate to more services for people okay yeah yesterday was told the taste of the pudding is in the eating six months time we will be um we we shall have tested and seen if it works but let me cross the floor now and uh take you to my colleague noah keep boy who's uh, sitting on the other side noah come at the time or come at the man <laughs> <laughs> this is his time. Take it away. Ah. Wow. That's incredible. Yes, indeed. As you can see, there are some photo ops. And I was just chatting up with uh, my guest here, John Mutua from IEA, Job Wenjohi from Kenya Association of Manufacturers, and Walter Mutua from uh, Deloitte, East Africa, in regards to the photo op and the flower lapel. It looks very. What is the meaning of the word eccentric? I can't say that. I can't tell definitely, but it looks very sharp. Uh, and I saw earlier on also. You know, the, the, the former governor, the outgoing governor of the CBK and the incoming governor uh, of the Central Bank of Kenya uh, taking a photo of, that was quite uh, memorable right there. Just a right convergence of time, uh, Ken. But right here, uh, one of the biggest issues with this budget uh, has been its intention and what it speaks, you know in between the lines we have to read in between the lines and one of the issues that has come up is 
the sectors and the support that we're giving these sectors. So, Job, you are from the manufacturing sector. Yes. And we're just starting here. Manufacturing has the potential to transform this country. But as sector players, as Kenya Association of Manufacturers, you feel even some of the proposition inside this finance bill and this budget is counterproductive to the sector. What do you mean by that? Uh, yes. Uh, when the new government came into place, uh, we had the first meeting in October, whereby we agreed that the manufacturing sector is going to accentuate its contribution to the GDP from the current 7.2%, it has improved now to 7.8%, and not to go to 15, but could go to 20% by 2030. And by doing this, we were envisioning how we can drive the output from the current one trillion Kenya shillings, the output of by the manufacturing sector, to five trillion Kenya shillings. When you're talking about jobs creation, from the current 352,000 to a million, and these jobs are not for the, for the manufacturing sector, it's for Kenyans. So we had what we call the Serena Declaration. And the Serena Declaration, its objective was to call the government to the much needed support to the, to the sector from the policy perspective and also to, uh, for, from, the, from infrastructural development, the enablers. I have to say that one of the areas that we agreed on is that we are going to do value chain integration from the farming to, uh, to, to the manufacturing sector. If you look at the Kenya Kwanza plan, we have various value chains that have been identified yes. from building, mining, construction, textile uh, sector, uh, leather, 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 le leather sector, and pharmaceutical sector, and many others that have been identified. We have not, now we, we can say the intention was looking very right, yes. and you are feeling that time. We are going there. But now, when you start now interrogating uh, the short-term and immediate-term implementing policy papers, like now the, f the finance bill, you find it a little bit wanting, or even the budgetary allocation. Uh, as far as the value chains allocation is concerned, we have seen 267 billion Kenya shillings being allocated to these value chains so that we can be able to integrate backward the manufacturing to the farming, manufacturing to the pastoralism, manufacturing to, you know, to mining and many others. But when we move, come out to fiscal incentives or ta 